Peace be with you, my dear sisters and brothers. Jesus Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers, we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. The four Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, contain the records of several incidents or events which took place after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. These incidents or events have been recorded for two main interrelated aims. One, to affirm that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead indeed. Two, so that we may believe in him and be saved. My dear sisters and brothers, today's reflection highlights some of the records of the New Testament which affirm that Jesus Christ is risen indeed. Throughout the history of all mankind, there has never been a more powerful event than the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He did what no other man or religious uh, women could ever do. He conquered death and he lives still today. Critics have tried hard to find holes in the resurrection story. Skeptics have attempted to prove it did not happen. Yet his power continues to impact and change lives. Historical evidence and scriptural truth continue to remind a lost world that Jesus indeed did rise again. And he's made a huge difference in so many of our lives and in our world because of his resurrection. We can see these results of the resurrection in our own lives. To affirm that Jesus has risen from the dead, John's Gospel tells us that Mary Magdalene and her friends saw an empty tomb. We can see the new love of Mary Magdalene getting up very early in the morning to see Jesus Christ and she saw. If the empty tomb was not a sufficient proof of the Lord's resurrection for the resurrection of Jesus Christ is true because he appeared to Mary Magdalene. It's a new way of seeing. Some people saw only the empty tomb. But Mary Magdalene saw Jesus himself. It's a new way of seeing. Jesus appeared not only to Mary Magdalene, but to the large group of disciples as well. And to clear any doubt that the disciples were daydreaming, the risen Lord appeared to the group of disciples several times. Today's gospel passage, for instance, narrates one of such appearances of the risen Lord. You see, Jesus appears, there is new joy, there is new greeting, there is new food, there is new mission. They are all results of the resurrection. Those disciples, especially Thomas, who would not rely on the testimony of even the senior apostles like Peter and John, Jesus would eventually appear. Therefore, my dear sisters and brothers, there is not only an empty tomb. Jesus appeared several times after his resurrection. This is the new faith, the results of the resurrection. To those who thought his appearance was that of a ghost, the reason Jesus would say, touch me and see for yourself. 
a ghost has no flesh and bone as you can see I have. If this is still not sufficient proof for some people, then they should be informed that risen Jesus ate in the presence of the disciple. Today's gospel. So, the result of the resurrection is that we become a new person, not a ghost. If like Thomas, some are still not sure of who appeared to the disciple, thinking that probably it was a stranger or an angel of the Lord who visited them, the risen Jesus proved that he who was crucified was the one who is risen by showing the disciple the crucifixion marks on his hand, feet and side, as if to say that the surgical marks prove that he was the very person who went through the surgery for your salvation. So my dear sisters and brothers, the new wounded healer, Jesus Christ, this is the result of the resurrection. I become a wounded healer. Some stories in the Acts of the Apostle give us an icing on the cake. That is, because Jesus is risen, miracles could be performed in his name. For instance, Peter and John performed a miracle in his name. They told the lame beggar, silver and gold we have none, but in the name of Jesus Christ get up and walk. And instantly he was healed. My dear sisters and brothers, Jesus is risen and alive indeed. Hallelujah. This is the new miraculous power of Jesus Christ. Repentance. The God of our Father raised Jesus whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as the leader and the savior to give repentance to Israel. So when you go through a change of mind and heart, a new repentance, that is the result of the resurrection. New birth. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1. 3. New life, being born again, is the result of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Forgiveness of sin. If Christ has not been raised, your hope is futile and you are still in your sin. So when you believe that Jesus Christ has been crucified for the sake of your sin, a new forgiveness is flowing from the cross. The Holy Spirit, this Jesus raised up, and that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you see and hear. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, 32 to 33. That's where we receive the new spirit. New spirit is the result of the resurrection. The Lord's personal fellowship and protection. Behold, I am with you always till the end of the world. Matthew 28, 20. This is new presence of Jesus Christ, the risen Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, our own resurrection from the dead, we know that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. We also will rise again like Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4.14 4. My dear sisters and brothers, this uh, Today's first reading, taken from the Acts of the Apostle, gives us Peter's second sermon forcefully shows 
how the messianic prophecies have been fulfilled in the crucified and risen Jesus and challenges uh, the Jews to repent and turn towards God so that their sins may be wiped away. New repentance go through. The second reading John answers doubts raised by the heretics of his time asserting the fundamental Christian doctrine that Jesus' death was a sacrifice offered as an expiation for our sin. Jesus died for our sin. Today's gospel describes Jesus' appearance on the evening of his resurrection to his apostle who were in the locked upper room, the cynical. We see Jesus remove the doubts of his apostle about his resurrection by inviting them to touch him. And by eating a piece of cooked fish, Jesus explains how the prophecies have been fulfilled in him. Then he commissions them to bear witness to him and preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name after receiving the Holy Spirit. So, my dear sisters and brothers, if you really encounter Jesus Christ, you will experience this new love, new hope, new forgiveness, new repentance, new joy, new faith in Jesus Christ. He is not dead. He is alive. We pray. My revealing Lord, you showed yourself to your disciple not only physically but spiritually, revealing your very essence to them interiorly. Please bestow this gift upon me, dear Lord. May I come to know you and believe you with all my heart. As I do, please use me as an instrument of your mercy to others. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Oh,